Okay, so it's been a very, very busy day today for Apple announcing new products. Although there wasn't any Apple event, there was new products announced today, a total of four, which we'll talk about briefly in today's video. And just a ton of new software was announced today in form of RC. So of course, we'll talk about everything in today's video. iOS 16.1 RC was released today, of course, alongside additional software. So let's just dive right into this video. Now, as always, if you would like to stay up to date with the latest iOS news and Apple software updates, of course, course don't forget to subscribe and make sure you turn on those notifications so that you don't miss another episode now as i mentioned apple released four new products today one being a brand new apple tv more information on that links will be in the description the biggest announcement in my opinion was the new 10.9 inch entry level ipad which is now redesigned to look very similar to current ipads so a squared off design touch id on the, the power button and you now get a full screen four new colors USB C is on board this is for the entry level 10.9 inch which i'm super happy to see the ipad pro 11 inch and the ipad pro 12.9 also received an update as well with the Apple M2 processor, which is a powerful processor for an iPad. Again, links will be in the description for all of four new products released today by Apple. Crazy, crazy day. Now, as I mentioned, iOS 16.1 RC has just been released today. Now, as I mentioned, RC, for those of you that do not know, this is the release candidate. So this is the software that you'll see in the next couple of days, and I'll talk about the release date for this software here. So let's go into general and about, and there is the current bill number. There it is. I was 16.1 RC is 20B79 and there it is that's going to be the official final release unless something major happens before October 24th which is the expected release date for this software then we should be fine so let's go here aside from iOS 16.1 here's the developer portal Apple also released iPadOS 16.1 RC we have macOS 13 RC was released for the Mac for the Apple Watch we have watchOS 9.1 RC and a tvOS 16.1 RC has been released for the Apple TV as well. Now, aside from iOS 16 updates, we also have an iOS 15 update. iOS 15.7.1 and iPadOS 15.7.1 was released for iPhones and iPads that do not support iOS 16. So for example, if you have an iPhone 7 or an iPhone that just doesn't support iOS 16, that you now have 15.7.1 RC, which should be released alongside 16.1. So as I mentioned, October the 24th. So mark your calendars, that is the day when Apple will be releasing all of this software. So we have iOS 15.7.1 for older iPhones. We have iPadOS 15.7.1. We also have iOS 16.1 officially being released on October the 24th. That is a week from today or six days after the filming of today's video. Of course, iPadOS 16.1, macOS 13, watchOS 9.1, tvOS 16.1, and maybe HomePodOS 16.1 as well. So next month, Monday is going to be update day for everyone. So stay tuned here to the channel because I'll continue covering iOS 16.1. I want to run a few tests before I tell you guys if it's okay to install or update to this software here. Just give me a couple of days, maybe two more days. I want to test the battery thoroughly. I want to keep quickly give you guys a quick recap in regards to the software. By the way, if you want the new iPads wallpaper, there's four new wallpapers for the 10.9 inch you can use on your iPhone. I'll have a link down below and there's two new ones for the iPad Pro, as you can see right here, I'll link those in the description down below as well if you want to go ahead and grab those. Now, let's talk about iOS 16.1 because there's a lot that's coming with this update. First up is iCloud Share Photos. So this feature will now be fully featured and enabled on 16.1. Also, live activities. There's certain apps here that will be supporting live activities from the get-go. Let me find here Uber Eats. So Uber Eats, I have it right here, and it does support live activities. Once the software is released, Uber and Uber Eats, I believe, will be among the first uh, a starbucks as well of course the apple tv app as well so live activities will be fully featured on 16.1 i'm happy to see that i want to quickly shift my attention over to the wallet app because you can now fully delete the wallet app from your iphone not only would you be able to remove it from the home screen but you can entirely delete it from your iphone which is definitely a first for apple now also speaking of the wallet application you'll now be able to share keys from cars hotel rooms so digital keys can now be shared let's go into the home application here 
here and let's go into some of the settings here to show you what I mean or actually let's go here into the things you can do if we just go to the bottom here we have entry so under entry we have the new keys to unlock and of course for the vehicle hotel rooms and things like that can now be shared so that's going to be featured here on 16.1 happy to see that now also with iOS 16.1 Apple is now enabling users to have a savings account and I'll have more details on that I haven't really gotten into the nitty-gritty of that so I don't want to speak much about that because it is finance uh, but Apple will now allow you to sort of send some of your Apple cash into a savings account as well with your Apple card and all that so I'll have more details for that in the future for you guys and I want to shift my attention over to matter because under get started here Apple has this new splash screen or information card right here for matter and matter of course is a new connectivity standard coming to iOS so this standard was never here now this opens and makes iOS uh, more uh, compatible with more products if you see this logo here on any uh, home accessory that is the matter logo and iOS now supports that so this opens up the door for more accessories that will be supported by the home kit and home application on your iPhone so matter support coming for iOS 16.1 for even more accessories to be supported by your iPhone for the home now let's shift our attention here quickly because there's something that's coming under battery here so if we go to battery and we go to battery health and charging clean energy charging now this feature is only available in the US and of course this one aims to reduce the carbon footprint by charging your iPhone when the grid is under a clean emissions now here's the thing I've had a few issues with this one it would not charge my iPhone sometimes when I was in my vehicle but I don't know if the RC has fixed that issue I'll report back to you guys make sure to report back here in the next two to three days make sure to subscribe because I'll have a follow-up video in regards to that also battery is a big concern in my opinion on 16.1 so make sure to stay tuned in the next 24 to 48 hours right before the software is released I'm going to be coming back and share additional details in regards to battery bugs and performance overall now let's talk about the, the battery percentage indicator because as you may remember with the initial release of this feature on iOS 16 Apple did not support the iPhone 11 or the iPhone 10 R or the iPhone 12 mini or 13 mini so if you have these devices that do not support the battery percentage indicator on the status bar with iOS 16.1 you'll now be able to enable this feature under the batteries category so go to battery here on your iPhone and of course go ahead and enable the battery percentage right there you'll now be able to do that again on iPhone 11 iPhone 10 R iPhone 12 mini and 13 mini are now a part of this new feature now I want to touch upon a two minor or two features that Apple has added one to the App Store here which I really like in app content is now available and on by default so when you download an application if you don't open this app immediately whatever app you download the content will be downloaded and ready for you to use without having to wait to download any updates or any uh, in-app information that you may need in order to run the app which I'm super happy to see and if we go to for example remember that copy and paste bug within iOS uh, 16 that many users really hated where it would ask you for permissions to copy and paste something into another app well Apple has now made that a permission so when you update to iOS 16.1 if you have an app that prompts you uh, for example I have Google Maps here that's constantly prompted me so I went into the actual settings here so let's find Google Maps it's probably going to take me forever here let's look for Google Maps so there it is Google Maps right there so you see this right here this option copy right there paste from another application ask deny or allow so I'm going to keep that as allow so it never asked me every time I copied something from another app if I want to paste it for example an address that someone sends me via message if I copy it and try to paste it into the Google Maps it will prompt me with that prompt that's very annoying so when you update to 16.1 if you don't want that you want to go ahead and allow always and that way you don't get prompted again so uh, individual applications will be able to do this with 16.1 and you can go ahead and change those permissions as you wish so just a quick recap guys four new products one new Apple TV a new iPad entry level 10.9 inch two brand new iPads Pro 11 and 12.9 inch kind of crazy hopefully I transmitted this information properly to you guys I hope you guys have a great day and enjoy iOS 16.1 again report back in the next 24 to 48 hours maybe 72 depending on how long it takes me to test this software thoroughly before the official release thank you for watching this video guys and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.